Vehicles like the Lancador concept mean that Lamborghini is right on the cusp of electrification, but before it completely gives up on internal combustion power plants, the company's legendary naturally aspirated V12 is getting at least one more go around with the 2024 Revuelto. It's Lamborghini's very first plug-in hybrid, but that doesn't mean it is a shirking violet because it still retains that glorious and sonorous engine that we've come to love in Lamborghini vehicles from the Miura all the way to the Aventador. I'm about to get behind the wheel of the Revuelto for the very first time, but before I do that, I'd love to invite you to please subscribe to the Motor One YouTube channel. You can also find a link to our full first drive of the Revuelto at the link in the description. And if you wanna let us know how we're doing, you can give us feedback on any of our social media channels. That's X, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Threads. Now, let's go for a spin. The Revuelto is immediately recognizable as a Lamborghini, starting up front where you get these Sion-inspired, very narrow headlights. There's also lots of really cool little Y motifs throughout the vehicle, including the daytime running lights, the taillights, and a big old graphic on the side of the car. My favorite feature on any Lamborghini has to be these weird angular hood strakes that call back to the oh-so 1980s Countach, which is arguably one of the very first wedge-shaped supercars ever to enter the collective consciousness. Now moving around the side, the Revuelto again kind of has that familiar Lamborghini shape, including this canopy style front end. Lamborghini was very conscious about giving this window line a very low cut so that you had great visibility to your next apex so that you could really drive this thing with some confidence. There's also a massive side air intake, as you'd expect. There are a few little Diablo cues in the shape of this rear quarter window, and it all just looks appropriately aggressive and geometric. Now, moving around the rear is probably my favorite and the most controversial view of the Revuelto. Obviously, you get some cool active aerodynamics, and it's great to see one driving down the road and seeing this spoiler come up and down, but my favorite feature has to be the sport bike-inspired exhausts that are tucked up really, really high. It gives the Revuelto tons of presence when you're approaching from the rear, and obviously you know it's a Lamborghini because it has such aggressive tumble home and so much of that wedge-shaped presence that we've come to expect from the company's super sports cars. All right, this is it. Behind the wheel in the Lamborghini Revuelto. 1,001 horsepower. It's Lamborghini's first plug-in hybrid and it's the world's first V12 plug-in hybrid. All wheel drive except on this car, instead of an actual mechanical drive shaft connecting the front wheels, it has a pair of electric motors that give it true torque vectoring. So those electric motors provide 350 kilowatts to the front axle, uh, sorry, 350 Newton meters to the front axle, and it can vary the wheel torque from side to side by up to 2100 Newton meters, which is an absolutely incredible amount of variation when the rubber actually hits the road. It's also got an incredibly complicated uh, regen system that will provide maximum regen uh, obviously when you're on full you know fully braking but it'll also do regen as a stability control so instead of the brakes stepping in to handle stability control it'll actually apply some negative drag to the rear act or to the uh, electric motors so very complicated powertrain for this super sports car and we're gonna find out how it drives on the Vallelunga circuit so here we go I'm gonna shut up and let you guys just enjoy the music of that V12 engine. I've got a Lamborghini Pro driver in the car ahead of me showing me how to do it. Oh, there goes my mic. Now this car does weigh almost 4,000 pounds, so it is heavier than the Aventador, and it's longer as well, so you would think that agility goes down, but because of that front axle torque vectoring, and there's also rear wheel steering, it's surpri <laughs> surprisingly nimble. I caught myself by surprise there. Oh man, surprisingly nimble for how big it is. It's period, surprisingly nimble full stop. You don't have to qualify it with size. 
it. Here we go. Last hairpin turn before we get back on the front straight. Let's have some fun. break into this first fairly complex set of corners very late apex on this one right here oh. slowest corner on Valle Lunga right here and we're off to the races slow down again for these S's Also, a rear axle embedded in the uh, secondary shaft of that dual clutch transmission that is now mounted behind the engine instead of in front of it because, of course, there's a battery. I'm gonna shut up and drive. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> As I was trying to say before I lost my entire brain, there is a, uh, a third electric motor mounted to the secondary shaft of the dual clutch transmission that provides both some traction control and a little bit of torque ad uh, adding when you're pushing it hard. But for the most part, it's, it's kind of there for uh, regen and just kind of generic engine support. It's not really there to propel the car forward like the front axle motors are. And honestly, the, the combination of all these super complex powertrain systems is really impressive. Like, this car just feels really natural when you're, when you're pushing it hard. It doesn't feel like there's a million different systems going on trying to keep you going. It just feels very natural and intuitive and above all, thrilling. Absolutely, absolutely thrilling. All right, I'm gonna do really good on these last couple corners and I'll come back and talk to you in a second. All right. Here we are for our cool down process. Just a stunner, an absolute stunner of a car. We're gonna tuck in behind this uh, this fellow up here while we do our cool down. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, so as I was saying, there's a bunch of different systems at work here and it doesn't feel like there's a ton going on underneath the surface. What you're just getting is a really thrilling and exciting driving experience. When Lamborghini engineers set out to build the Revuelto, they wanted it to be more powerful, they wanted it to be faster, and they wanted it to be easier to drive really, really quickly. It couldn't feel neutered, it couldn't feel artificial, it couldn't feel digital. It needed to feel very thrilling and very analog. And I can tell you that they've absolutely succeeded in that. Of course, there's always going to be like a roller coaster style thrill of high G forces through a corner or lots of really quick acceleration. But what the Revuelto does best is giving you that feel and that excitement even when you're not pushing hard through a corner or flooring it from a stop. You could be at a constant, in a constant radius on a relatively small narrow corner and it's still gonna be really exciting and really enjoyable to drive because you've got the engine noise screaming away behind you and you've got all these, very direct powerful steering and excitement going on from the front of the car it just it, it feels analog and and very natural and that's really exciting especially as we enter the era of electrification this car proves that evs don't necessarily have to be boring that plug-in hybrids don't have to be boring or they don't have to feel artificially boosted this car feels very natural and exciting and analog in spite of the fact that it has 35 percent lower carbon emissions than any other lamborghini super sports car before it it's it's amazing how rapidly the company was able to benchmark itself and then exceed those benchmarks with the revuelto huge thrill 10 out of 10 no notes 
As they say, that's all folks. My time in the Lamborghini Revuelto has come to an end and I am so thrilled that I got a chance to drive this car in this setting. I'm also beyond impressed that Lamborghini was able to maintain all of its different design goals with the Revuelto. It's an absolute thrill to drive and apparently it gets better fuel economy and has lower emissions. Beyond all that, it's really easy to access it. I'm relatively novice when it comes to driving and I still had a phenomenal time clipping the apexes out here at Vallelunga. I hope I get a chance to drive the Revuelto again someday soon, but just in case I don't, at least I've got a ton of great memories from today. Thanks for watching.